let's get started. Uh, if anybody joins in while we're already in it, that's fine. Um, hopefully everybody will just know to meet. <laughs> um, anyway, so welcome. My name is Megan. As most of you guys know, uh, some of you guys are newer faces that I haven't met yet. So welcome. And I'm glad that you're with us today. Uh, we are going to be painting a springtime scene. I know it's a wintry day, so maybe a lot of you guys are looking forward to some springtime. Um, I have the painting back there, but I will also be sharing my screen. And I think there's a setting so that way you can have me as like the main focus. You can click on whatever frame you want. So I think when you have it in gallery view, you can click on whoever you want to see as the main picture. Um, so you can click on me and then I'll also have my shared screen option. So that way you can see the painting finished. So that way you have that as referenced. Um, so if, if it doesn't work, just let me know and I'll switch it back and I'll just every once in a while I'll show you my picture. Um, so I know you guys all picked up your kits. If you were uh, late to register, I know you don't have your kit from me, but I gave you the supplies that you would need for this paint and sip. So what you have in your kit, I know the biggest one that I've had some people ask about was this piece of paper. This is your palette paper. I know a lot of times you see like the more fancy ones that are the plastic or you can have like this nice one with a hole in it and stuff, but for easy packaging and everything, we have this nice little piece of paper. It's your palette paper. So we're gonna be putting our paint on that in a second. You don't have to do it right now. If you already did, that's fine. Um, but I'll show you guys how much to put on and everything. Um, so you have your paint set. Um, there are these little tubes, these little guys here. We'll be using almost all of them except for black and the um, vermilion that's in here. So if you have those, so you can set them aside. We probably won't be using them. I mean, unless you want to do your own little additions, you're welcome to. I actually encourage you to be creative and do whatever suits you. Um, so unless you don't have any use for it, you can just set it aside. You should also have three brushes in varying sizes. Mine look different because they're just what I had laying around that match what you guys have. So you should have one that's pretty large, it's like a washer brush, and then you have another one that's a little bit smaller and then even smaller than that. So you just have these three varying sizes. And then you should have had your canvas. So you can set that up. It is a 12 by 16. So if you feel like framing it later, you can always find canvas frames. Um, and then I think that was it. You guys should have all received a little little gift baggie from me too. So it has my business card, a little thank you card and some treats. I thought chocolate would be really nice to go with your wine if you guys are having some wine or any other kind of beverage. So yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks for showing PJ. Alrighty. So um, a little bit about myself. My name is Megan. I graduated from George Mason University with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in the concentration of painting in 2015. Uh, as most of you guys know, I now work for PWAR as their communications and events director. And I finally got to pick up painting again in the last year, actually, thanks to COVID. I got to start painting with my watercolors at home. And then I started just doing this for the last or our last fall conference that we had. I did the first paint and sit for PWAR. Um, so it kind of feeds to my desire that I've always had to teach, especially for teaching art to kids. Um, obviously, you guys aren't kids, but it, it still works. It, it feeds that um, really happiness in my heart. So I'm really happy to be doing this again for you guys. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to continue doing it. And well, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to have you guys do is to put some paint on your palette paper. So we have the primary color is blue. This, we have this crimson red. So it's not quite the primary red, but we have red and we have yellow. We have yellow ochre in here, which is a beautiful color yellow to use for a lot of those more neutral tones. We also have a lemon yellow. So these are different than what I normally paint with, but I wanted to paint with what you guys all have too. So that way I know what everybody else is doing. Perfect. So I'm gonna leave this up. I think it'll be easier for you guys to see this all the time. So that way you know what the finished product is supposed to look like. And then you'll also see me doing it as we go along. Um, again, if you have any questions or comments, just chime in, let me know. And let me see. So you start off with the blue. So I know we're going to be starting with the blue because we're going to make that blue sky. It kind of doesn't look blue to me on my screen, but I promise it's a blue sky. 
Uh, so we're going to put about like a good amount of that blue on there. I wouldn't use all of it just because we still have the blue to do in the for the water. So I would do you can do like half of it maybe. And since these tubes are pretty small, I'm going to just full disclosure, we're going to be using the water to help thin it out and spread it across. If you have more paint, feel free to add more paint. <laughs> but I noticed that these are kind of small tubes, but they should work. All right, so what we're going to do to start, we're going to have the blue and then your white. We're going to add a little bit more white on the paper. I'm going to lift my palette so you guys can see. But you'll add your white also kind of next to it. You don't need a whole lot. I'll show you. So I just added my blue and I added some white next to it. And what we're gonna do, Water. you can wet your brush to help this along too. So wet your brush. You're gonna mix some white with the blue. Mm -hmm. Also tip, you do not have to have a fully blue sky. If you wanna make it like almost sunsetty and you wanna add some reds and yellows and stuff, we can do that later too. So especially if you have those areas where it's still kind of white and you wanna add a little extra to it, that might help. So for now we can mix, add some white and blue together. I'm gonna to add a little bit more water too, just to keep it thin. And then we're gonna start in the middle top, middle, up here, and we're just gonna kind of work our way across like that. Just kind of go back and forth. Cause you'll notice, especially looking at this painting, you're not gonna have to go completely to the edge. So we're gonna save paint doing this too. So we're just kind of gonna loosely cover this top part of the canvas. And I'm not even fully mixing my white in the blue. If you already have, that's fine. But I like to have those streaks. If you guys have done the paint and with me before, you know that I kind of like that, that texture look. You'll even see that there, how it's kind of getting darker right there. I don't mind it. And you can do this to about like a little more than halfway. We're probably gonna go down to about there. I don't know if you guys can see that, probably not. Well, to the top of the braid. And then once we get to that point, now we're gonna do a little bit of like a line for the the water for the river that's going through or that the bridge is going to be going over. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just going to be in that kind of general shape. If you can see that, like it's kind of like a triangle. If you guys did the fall time painting with us before with me before, it's kind of like that same shape. So if you've gotten to that point, great. All right, once you have that, we're gonna go back in and we're gonna add like a little bit of a darker line right at that horizon line, that darker blue. That's where your sky is going to meet the water. So we're still using the same big brush. We're just going to go over like that. And then whenever you're ready, continue with some of that darker blue. And you're just gonna, so follow that shape that you just made and you're just gonna make strokes like that. 
We're going to start with that. We'll come back over to this again later. This is just kind of starting our shapes out. So you have that on one side and then you're going to do it on the other side. All right, so now I'm going to go back over and kind of cover that middle area, but not fully because we want to have that kind of reflection looking pattern. Do you see that? It's like mine looks so sloppy. Mm -hmm. All right. If you still have white, you can use that and you can add that to it. Give it a little bit of dimension. If not, you can put a tiny little bit out just to help add some. And we're going to come back over to this too later, let it dry a little bit. Okay, so that's a good place to start. You can put your uh, big brush in your water. You can put it in there and just leave it in there or you can just move it around and put it on a paper towel or whatever you need to. All right, so while that is kind of just sitting there, we're going to make that shape for the bridge. And I'll show you a super easy way to do it. I'm gonna have to turn my canvas towards me so that I can do it well too, but you're gonna take your medium size brush and when you take it in, or you're gonna put it onto that burnt umber so that brown that you have, we're gonna put a little bit on there and you're gonna use that. And easiest thing for me to do is you're gonna just plant your hand on that middle part of your canvas and you're gonna like do like an arch with your hand. And that'll give you a pretty perfect semicircle. It, I mean, as close as you can to perfect. So that's all you're gonna do. It's just kind of like a one wrist action because that rotation of your wrist is going to help you with that half circle. And what we're gonna do, you're gonna go from that kind of off part to the next side. So I'll do it and I'll show you, um, but I might have to have it. So it's like the flat side. I kind of go like, just as if you would, I don't know. So having it flat on your um, canvas like that and just going across. So it's almost like that thin part is gonna glide across. I'll show you. It probably won't be in one smooth motion. <laughs> I'll probably end up going like choppy, but so I start in the middle when I do it. So I know where the top point is gonna be and then I'll work my way down. So probably have it about here. And it's not gonna be perfect, but I'll still try. <laughs> so you can kind of see that. It, it's as smooth to a half circle as possible. Yeah, you just have to move your wrist. It's not gonna be like your whole arm because I think your arm will just make it go. Well, the, so you see how that bottom part of the bridge, how it's just like one solid chunk of brown. It can either be the top most part of it or the bottom most part of it. But either way, we're gonna refine it. Um, it's just however it ends up looking on yours. Uh, everybody's is gonna be different. So I don't know if the placement of where it's gonna land is makes you more comfortable to have it be the bottom part or if the top part. For me, since it's already so close to the edge of my water, I'm probably gonna have that be the bottom most part. So now I'll add another layer to the top. It's thinner at the top and then it widens out towards the bottom. So you're gonna kind of follow that shape and then just let it go out a little bit more. You're asking good questions. And then, so since mine kind of looks a little wonky on that side, I can't really tell. Um, what's nice about it is that you can always reshape it depending on if you think it looks a little fat on one side, you can make it look fatter on the other side. It's 
I mean, you can use water for any part of this. Um, I'm just getting my outline of the bridge that I want, and then I'm gonna go in and fill it and thin it out. But we're not gonna be using a whole, whole lot of brown. The, the only brown that we're using is on this bridge. So you're probably gonna be fine with using like that entire tube if you really want to. So once you have your shape, you can go ahead and fill it in. Um, when you get to the end, you don't have to completely fill it in. Um, like it can look a little choppy if you want. It's fine because we're going to go over it with the green to cover that bottom part anyway. But you can go ahead and fill in that bottom. And after we do um, the other part of the bridge, we're going to take a little drying break and we're going to allow some of our affiliates who are on here to talk for a minute. Uh, this event is sponsored by our PWAR affiliates, so we want to give them some time to be able to chat. So just want to give you guys a little, a little time for a break. And then if you think your water is really yucky and stuff, I'll let you guys go um, swap out your water. All right. So that's how my bridge is right now. And then this next part is pretty easy. You're gonna use that same color. Um, yeah, use the same color. You can actually add a little bit of white to it just so that it helps with later on so you can tell the difference. Um, yeah, add a tiny bit of white to it. And what we're gonna do, you're gonna make a line going straight across to the same width as that arch that you just made. You're gonna make a line across and then just fill it in with like a little bit of a lighter color brown. I don't have any tricks for making it a straight line, so just do your best. I wish I had a better trick, but I really don't. Uh, maybe just trying to glide across the bottom of your canvas if that helps. Um, I guess that's kind of what I'm doing. Again, use your water to thin it if you need to. I'm not gonna go like straight, straight down. I'm just gonna go like that because we want that organic look of the plants when we start to add in those. So you can just make it brush stroke like. Of course, I make myself the spotlight video when we're about to turn it over to um, some of the affiliates who want to talk about their business. So. Um, you're going to use that smallest brush now, and we're going to take some of that white and you can mix it with some of the brown too, but we're going to have more primarily white. So what we're going to do is just take some of that white on your brush and you're just gonna do like little dashes all along the bridge. You can make them in any spacing that you want, as small as you want, big as you want, um, but you just wanna have those dashes going along. So however much time that you need, just go ahead and do it. I like to do it until the paint kind of runs out on my brush and I'm just using the side of my brush. I'm not using the thick one. I mean, that's if you wanna make big, bigger dashes, you can use the fatter side or you can just use the thin side like what I'm doing. But I'm just going across making dashes. They can be varying lengths, they can be short, uh, longer ones. Um, and then you can go back over and add more white or brown to them to make it look different. And I, I go in like that brick style. So I'll kind of go in between. They're, they're not like right on top of each other. At least I try to. 
Ooh. I'm going back through and I'm adding a little bit of brown. Okay. <laughs> All right. When you think that your um, dashes are how you like them, you can rinse off that brush, and we'll we're going to be getting over to the the greenery next. I'm going to add a couple more layers to my bricks to add some depth. Whenever you're ready, I'm going to be using that um, medium sized brush for this next step. And if you're uh, up to speed with me, we're going to be taking that, I think it says hooker's green. <laughs> it's just basically that darker green. Sorry if my color is all off now. My light went out, so I had to switch to the other one. Um, but we have this, the darker green of your options. We're going to put that on your palette. So whenever you're ready, you can do that. Sherry, I can see you laughing. <laughs> it looks like a hunter's green. I don't know what the name is that they came up with. <laughs> All right. So we're going to use that and then put a little bit of, um, yellow ochre on your, um, palette too. To be neighboring, not touching, but neighboring. The two together will make a really nice color. All right, once you have that on your palette, um, we're going to be using that next. So now that you have those colors on your palette, you're just going to put a little bit of that yellow ochre with that green, kind of mix them together. Makes like almost like a lighter of those greens. So once you're ready, we're just kind of going to like dab around just to fill in some negative space here now. It helps bring the whole painting together and kind of see where things are going. And that yellow ochre, you'll see that it, it adds like a really nice earthy color, almost like a soft brown with it. And I'm starting on the side of my bridge so that way I can build from there. If you guys have enough paint, please feel free to paint your the sides of your canvas. Um, I'm avoiding it just for now and I'll just come back to it later with whatever paint I have left. But if you have plenty, go ahead and paint the sides of your canvas. And you can take this and go along that edge of your river here. I'm doing a little bit more green than I am yellow. So I'm going to go under here, go all the way up to that edge, that, that horizon line right there. Just kind of dab. So I have my brush turned on its side like this. So it's going on my canvas like that. And I'm just gently dabbing it. So it creates like a very organic flow into that river. And we'll go back over that too with a brown. So that way it has like that mud in there. So 
So you can continue doing that all around on both sides of your bridge, just dabbing some greens, greens and yellows. And you'll look, if you look at my palette, I have my green and my yellow kind of blending together and I'm just mixing them as I go. It's not all at once, but I'm just kind of doing like a, however I feel. If I want one brush stroke to have a little more yellow, I'll dab more yellow on my brush. If I want it to have more green, I'll have more green. But even I'll have like one corner of my brush having the yellow and the other one having green. I don't know if you can kind of see that. But yeah, one, one has green and one has yellow. And then I'll just use them, use that at the same time. And it kind of creates those strokes that I want kind of a little bit more naturally. So I don't know if you can see that but I'll have my yellow and my green in there together at the same time because they shared the same brush without being fully mixed. And this is also something that you can add water to to help thin it, especially if you wanna go up this way. Up in this area, I'm just going to go kind of all over the place. It doesn't have to have any sort of pattern, doesn't have to be perfect at all. So you can fill in that space that we went into before, or we avoided before because of the blue. Yeah. If you want a darker green for some of those more shadowed areas, you can mix some of your brown with the green. And if you feel like this brush just isn't doing it for you, you can switch out your brush. You can use whatever brush you want to for whatever sizes that you want. Can even actually mix your blue. If you have some blue that you want to mix in, that makes a really pretty darker green. And then if that, some of that blue comes through, it, it really adds a nice little glow to it. To add some of that dirt, looking that shore look to your um, river, I mix just a little bit more of that yellow ochre with some of that brown and even some green. I honestly haven't even changed my brush. I've just been mixing everything with the same brush. <laughs> so if that works for you, you can do the same thing.
I'm going to want to have some pink or some purples or something. Um, but the good thing about acrylic is that it dries so quickly that you don't have to worry about it um, bleeding into any other colors. So if you do have green down and you're like, oh, wait, I want to put some pink here later, don't worry about it because chances are it's definitely going to be able to cover it, no problem. So you can layer a lot with acrylic paint. I'm switching out to my smaller one so that I can get a little bit more of the shape that I want. There's also this um, Viridian green that you have. Um, you can experiment with it and see how it looks. I think it's like a more of like a pepperminty kind of green. I think it'll add a really nice color. So you can play with that one too. All right, so if you guys are at a good place, I don't know if you guys saw, if you guys were watching me at all, but I was just adding in like little viney things. I was just taking my green and going over my bridge and stuff. And I was just adding like little like whisks to it. So that's something that you guys can do. Um, that's definitely not something that I had exactly on my bridge um, in the other one, but it's, it's just something I'm adding. So add whatever you want. Oh my gosh, sorry, I have a little cat that's trying to come in here. Anyway, um, so I got some paint together on my tray to add in some more um, other kind of vines that are in the background. I don't know if you see in the other, in this sample one, there's like a lighter green kind of going behind the bridge. So I'm just going to mix that yellow ochre with, um, I guess, another yellow that we have on here, unless it looks absolutely terrible. No, I would just mix um, some more of that yellow ochre with that darker green, but make it so it's mostly that yellow ochre. Okay. So you kind of get like a really light, but kind of like mossy green. So I would just go like random dots here and there just to fill in that. It just helps add some depth. So I'm making it kind of like show through underneath. Super easy step, um, not a whole lot extra with it. And then I'll show you what colors we'll mix for the, um, the flowers and stuff. But I just wanted to show you guys that before we move on. So you'll, you'll see that they kind of look like they're just floating, um, all these leaves. When you look at it really closely, yes, it'll look like that, but um, it's just kind of implied branches that it's on. Megan, I'm sorry. What color are we doing now? 
So I mixed um, that darker green again with that yellow ochre. Um, but I have it so it's mostly the yellow ochre. So it's that dark yellow, that like kind of mustardy looking yellow. Let's see, we're seeing that one. I'm gonna change this light color. So for this, the pinks and stuff, I'm gonna do two different piles just so that I have one that's definitely for a darker red and then another one that's for like a, the lighter pinks and stuff. I'll show you. You see, I just made two little dots. Sorry, it's really hard to see right now. But I, I'm doing two little dots. Um, one is for more of my darker, and then one is for the lighter pink. And I'm gonna put the my white on the side for the um, the pile that I want to have like more of my pinks with. And then. With that darker one, I'm actually going to put a little bit of the blue. If you still have blue on your um, palette that you haven't used it, you can use that. But I'm going to use the blue so that I can mix a little bit of a purple. All right. So with your cleaner, smaller brush, you're going to do how we mix with the other colors. Um, just add a little bit of that color to the white. So you can get that pink. You're probably going to use most of that white for that pink color, and that's fine. So I have mine, almost all my white used, and my brush is pretty covered in pink. So I'm just going to use that, and I'm just going to start dabbing on my my canvas. And I have a little bit of the regular red still mixed into it. So it kind of adds a little bit of like that texture look to it. I'm kind of actually using that to my advantage with it, if I have any darker red that's still on it, because I kind of like the way it looks. And you'll see that in my uh, original painting that it looks like I have flowery vines just hanging down. And that's just easy to do just by doing little dots all the way down. And then they kind of get thinner as you go. So if you have paint on your brush, you just let, you just go in that pattern. You don't want to have the bigger globs on the bottom part you kind of just start with the big and then it just kind of eventually just wears off and then it goes down like that If you feel like yours deserves a little bit more depth now, you can go ahead and add some of that darker red. When I do that part, I kind of twist my brush as I go. That way it's never the same side that's dotting the canvas. I twist it as I dot and it gives it a little organic look. I'm going to add little spots of pink down here in the green areas that I made down closer by the river. 
whether it's sprouting flowers or fallen petals, whatever. All right, if you guys are like me and want to take a break from your pink, I'm going to mix a little bit of my blue now with um, the other red pile. I like to use the same brush. You guys can switch up your brushes too, but I kind of like using that lightness that's already on my brush and creating a new like kind of like light purple color without having to get rid of any of my paint. So you'll see. Actually, I don't even have my camera on. So you'll see I have this other pile started and it's like just like a really pretty violet, almost with like a little bit of red in it too. So I'm just gonna go over in some other areas where I'm like, yeah, this could use purple. You can even go down lower and add some purple down here. And you can cover that end of that bridge with some, especially if it looks like yours has like a very straight edge. Um, I know mine did, wasn't, it didn't look like a straight edge, but it just had like some fuzzy spots. I was like, eh, I wanna cover this up. Hey Megan, I was still working on my pink. What two colors did you put together for the next one? For the pinks? for what you're doing now <clears throat> what's so, i'm kind of mixing like a bunch of different for different shades it just depends on what you want so i have pink on here which is the uh crimson red with the white um and then i i have two piles of the crimson red so that way i can have um the pink with so here i'll show you my thing so i have this pile over here which is my crimson red and the white so that I can have both white, pink, um, and then I have that crimson red and you have like all different shades all mixed in there. And then I also have this pile of the crimson red, but I've also mixed blue with it so that I can have this purple. Um, it's just a variety of different colors that you can use for your flowers. Um, and I think that way it's not like all mixed in. I, only, I, I always do this. You can see I have several different piles on here that are just like half used and I just use them with everything else. Um, so that's what I'm working on right now. Um, I'm also uh, just preparing to touch up any sky or water stuff that you guys want to do. Um, I know I said that we were going to get back to that a little while or, and towards the end. Um, so that's where I know that there's um, one thing that I know that we can do on these ones that I didn't do my sample one. But if you wanted to add like a reflection of the bridge. Um, that can add a little bit more dimension to it too. So you're putting more of the pink 